Hi, I'm Marigo, and this is part two of the basics of synthesis. Um, in this video, we're gonna cover the amplitude envelope or ADSR. It has been a while since I released the first video in the series. I have two kids, sometimes I can't get around to everything. So if you wanna revisit video one, it was all about the oscillator section of synthesizers and today is gonna be that next step, um, the amplitude envelope. Okay, so just revisiting our processes in the basics of synthesis. We start with our sound source, um, which is typically an oscillator. Sometimes it could be a sample. Then we move into the amp envelope to shape the volume of the sound. Here we are in Ableton. I've got the wavetable up. Just as a reminder on wavetable, this is the oscillator section. So as I move the oscillator position up and down, we kind of pick which shape we're using as the foundation of our sound. We're actually gonna skip over this filter section for now. We're gonna move over into the amplitude envelope. Maybe you've heard of the letters ADSR. We'll cover that today. Uh, and this is where we shape the volume of the sound or how the sound kind of evolves over time, right? Whether it has a fast attack, it's a plucky sound, maybe it's a slowly evolving, growing sound. So those letters stand for attack, decay, sustain, and release. So looking at this graph here, let's use a car for an example first. Let's say you're at a red light, which is right here. You're stopped. This little ramp here is the time it takes you to get from, let's say, zero miles per hour stop to 40. Maybe it takes you a couple seconds. And then when you're at 40, you realize, uh oh, the speed limit's 35. I'm going to slow down. The decay is going to be how long it takes you to get from the top speed down to the speed limit. The sustain is your cruising speed. And then your release is gonna be the moment you take your foot off the pedal, how long does it take for you to get to a stopped position again? Okay, so now switching from the car analogy to sound. What this actually is, is volume. So the attack is how the amount of time it takes for you to get from zero volume, silence, to peak volume once you like trigger a note. So a quick attack is going to sound kind of more plucky or instant, but if I make it a really slow attack, you can hear how it's getting louder over time, right? It takes a longer time to ramp up. And then decay. So in our car analogy, that was, we went from, you know, we went too fast. So we slowed down to the speed limit. That's going to be from your peak volume how long does it take to you for you to get to your sustain volume? Which is like when you're holding the keys. If you keep holding and holding and holding, right, where do you end up and where does the volume stay until you lift your hand off the keys? So sustain, that's S. And then your release is once you take your foot off the gas pedal or in music, it'd be like when we release the note, either if it's like a drawn MIDI clip or if we're playing keys or something, once I take my hand off, how long does it take for the sound to come to silence? So if I have a really long release time, check this out. And my hands off, it's still ringing, still ringing. Quick recap, attack. How long it takes to get to the loudest point from zero, from silence. Decay, how long does it take to get down to the sustain? And there doesn't have to be, um, the sustain could be all the way up. Maybe there isn't any decay. Um, sustain is just when you're holding the key down or you got a really long note, where does it park the volume, right? Where does it park the volume and release? How long does it take once you release the note to get to silence? So that's ADSR. So let's do a couple practical. I'm just going to let this clip play and we're going to, um, just play around with the, um, parameters here. Okay. So if I want a plucky sound. I can make the shape more like this, where there's no sustain. There's a really fast attack. And we could add release to give it a little, make it not quite so abrupt. If we want to have a little sustain, we can add some. Let's say we want more of a pad sound, right? So that's gonna be a softer attack. Nice. And a longer release. And we get that kind of washy, dreamy sound. 
And if we want just sort of like a brick wall, we're gonna just make everything loud and the release off is gonna be instant. Let's look at where the amp envelope is on a couple different synthesizers so that you start to see how they might look different. You don't always get a graph like this. So I've grabbed um, the analog synth um, here in Ableton. And so here you might be wondering like, where is that graph? I'm looking for even like ADSR, which I'm not really seeing. These are actually panels that you can toggle between, right? This is the oscillator section. This is the filter section. This is the amp section. So we want to click on the amp section and then we'll see our familiar graph here. And we can adjust. Cool. And I just want to make a note that under filter sections, we also have envelopes for filters, which we'll cover in the next video. So we're just talking about amplitude envelopes, amplitude meaning volume. So envelopes can be applied to anything, right? Uh, not anything, but a lot of stuff. So um, if you see the terms and shapes, uh, the graph shape, like, you know, all over the place, don't be surprised. But if you're trying to adjust the amplitude envelope, make sure the envelope that you've chosen is the amplitude envelope. So if we go back to wavetable for a sec, like check this out, if I expand it, then check this out, I've got three envelopes, but only one of them is labeled as the amplitude envelope. So that's important, right? Envelope two is just a separate one that could be mapped to the filter, the oscillator position. Sometimes there's two um, amp envelopes, one per oscillator. So check this out. We've got oscillator one, then goes to filter one, then goes to amp one. Right now we have oscillator two just being filtered through filter one and amp, and amp one. But if we turn these on, then oscillator two can have its own amplitude envelope. So we now get both the like slow pad sound and this um, kind of plucking thing happening. Right, they're both happening. So we can have two different envelopes, um, typically only if there's two um, oscillators. That's that's usually when I see that. Let's look at some plugins and see how things might look a little different. So here we have no graphs like we see in Ableton, but we have a filter envelope here and an amp envelope here. So now we just use these sliders. So all the way down, the attack is like immediate. But if I make it slower, And then if we want some release, turn that release up. And again, if we want to do more of like a plucky sound, we'll turn the, we'll turn that sustain down. Right, so if we remember from last time, this is the uh, oscillator section. And then you can see we have three different envelope sections down at the bottom. The first one is the amplitude envelope and you'll see A, D, R. So we turn up our um, A knob, start getting that softer attack. Uh, the sustain, it's kind of weird. It took me a second to find the sustain, but it's, it's up here. Um, Let's take the sustain down. We can make it back to kind of a little plucky sound. So that's where it is there. You can see how like they, they look similar. This one gives you the graph too. You'll always see the letters there. And the important thing is to make sure you are adjusting the correct envelope there. All right, so let's grab wavetable again. And let's just make like a, a few sounds, chords, lead, and a bass really quickly together so that we can play around with the uh, envelopes a bit. So here we go. We got the chords in already. So let's just make it sound cool. I'm gonna add some units in here. Nice, that's cool. We'll hit the global section later. <laughs> okay, so for these I'm gonna do like a little bit of a softer attack. Be mm. more sustain, a little bit more release. Not so much release. Okay, cool. For the bass, I'm just going to duplicate this track and we're just going to shortcut it here since we're mostly worried about the synthesis part of this, not the writing part. 
Uh, I'm just gonna delete all the notes except the top note. We're gonna take this down into bass land. Okay, let's take this up to like a square wave. Let's add oscillator two uh, and add, um, ugh, I don't know. Let's take that unison off. All right, for this, I'm just gonna go no attack, you know, immediate attack, full sustain, very little release. Let's actually go with uh, collection. Okay. You could add maybe some of that unit back. It's just two voices. All right, sweet. We got a bass sound. Let's add one more thing. I'm going to, um, we're going to rename this bass. Let's go ahead and duplicate our wavetable one more time. Um, but let's go with maybe, uh, let's use that plug in the Super 8. And for this one, let's throw on um, an arpeggiator. So I'm going to go MIDI effects, arpeggiator. Okay, cool. Just going to solo it out for a second. Let's like put the release up a little so we get the pluck, but then kind of a nice ring afterwards. Maybe not so long. Let's see. Okay. Cool. I like, I think attack all the way down, immediate attack. Let's get sort of a pluckier sound. Let's kind of revisit our oscillator section. Let's go up. Let's go up the octave. Cool. All right. So maybe just for fun before we go, before I end, let's throw some delay on there. I'm going to use Ableton simple delay ping pong. Let's take the ping pong. Okay, so with some pretty basic stuff, like we're only using the oscillator section and the ADSR, the amp envelope, we were able to make some pretty cool sounds from scratch uh, pretty quickly. So hopefully that's helpful um, in getting you familiar with the amplitude envelope and getting started making some of your own sounds. Um, so optional homework, try to make three sounds of your own playing around now with the oscillator section and the amplitude envelope. Try making a bass sound, a sound that you would use for chords or pad sound and um, a lead. The next video in the series is co gonna cover filters and how we can use envelopes and LFOs and things like that to uh, do fun things with filtering in our synths. In the meantime, happy music making.